Welcome back to this year's World Championships IBA Copenhagen 2017. We are gearing up for the Super Finals. Exactly, we just went through all the best flair bartender, all the best classic cocktail competitors, and we're going to the best of the best of the best right now here in Copenhagen, the Super Final. Yes, we have the six best, the six top competitors here, and that is based on their cocktails, of course, also on their flair. But here in the Super Final, the cocktail is what counts. We have five categories of uh, classic cocktails, and the winner of each category will be here, and the amazing Taiwanese flair bartender um, for the Super Final also. Here. And now we're going to see some slow motion picks. Uh, this is Mario. One of our finalists, and that was yeah. after dinner cocktail. Uh, representing Austria here. Um, absolutely fantastic showing. It's something we would expect from this man. He is a multiple, uh, multiple competitor in the IBA. He is a former super final winner. He is a former category winner. This guy just nails everything. He deserves to be here, and there's a reason he made it back again. He is just that good. And we really have to say that all the competitors in this super final is really, really, there's it, a reason they are here. Yeah, it's they just won the national competition, came here, beat all the other nations, and now this is the last nations remaining. Yeah, and it is a really, really uh, close crowd. You know, we got Austria, we got Denmark, we got Sweden, uh, Czech Republic, Slovak Republic, and Taiwan. All really great cocktail nations. And it, yeah, well, we expect we expect the best, and we got the best. And the best you will get here. Ansys is on the stage, ready for you guys, and to the stage. Welcome back to Copenhagen, Denmark, where we are having the big final here for 2017 IBA WCC cocktail competition. The gentleman standing next to me, he will introduce himself. He will have 10 minutes to create his drink one more time for our judges here on the side. He's not judged on technique that much anymore, but still the etiquette has to be there. Judges will test the drink. Judges will keep asking questions to the competitor. Basically, we're playing a small theater here as in the bar. So this is your tiny speakeasy bar here, which is called IBA Copenhagen. No one knows about it, just the whole world watches us. But um, yeah, this is pretty much it. And uh, we will begin with judges here. On my left here, the gentleman will introduce himself. Hello, my name is David Nipov. I am the rules chairman for the IBA and I'm from the United States. <laughs> Smart move. <laughs> Hello, my name is Nicola. I work on the Spirits Business Magazine. I'm from the United Kingdom. Thank you. And on my right, Okay. I'm Margit Kikas, I'm from Estonia, and I'm uh, organized next World Championship next year. So, Italian. <laughs> Hello, I am Pepe Dioni. I am the, the next uh, IBA president. Okay. So now we know who the judges are for this competition. The only last thing that we have to find out is who is this handsome gentleman standing right next to me. He's all the way from Austria. He is the champion in his own category, which is before dinner cocktail. He's won it with a gold medal. One and only Mario Hofferer, please welcome on stage here. He has 10 minutes to accomplish his mission. That's it. We're good to go. You're good. I'm fine. I'm Fantastic, fine. yeah. So you got some experience already. You know. Okay, your 10 minutes starts now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for having me. My name is Mario Hoffer, and I'm coming from the beautiful country of Austria. Even a warm welcome to our uh, judges, our new president, Mr. Peter Dioni. And um, I want to introduce you to my wonderful pre-dinner cocktail named Rosé Sissi. Rosé Sissi is based on... Uh, Finlandia vodka. Finlandia vodka is coming from, of course, Finland. It's grown, it is produced by a six um, row barley, and the water is coming from a beautiful private spring in Finland. 
The second product in my cocktail is coming from Austria, and this is the Schlumberger Sparkling. The, Schlum the, Schlumberger, the house of uh, Schlumberger is uh, older than 300 years, the oldest sparkling producer in Europe, and it's uh, produced like a champagne, it's Methode Champenois. So, um, judges, have you got any wonderful questions for me? Who want to start? You have been here before. Can you please tell us about your experience with the IBA and how it has changed or affected your life? Definitely, definitely. So I was, I was learning, uh, I was a cook before, I was a chef before, I was learning uh, four years in the kitchen. And then I went to the Austrian Bartenders Association with, uh, uh, it was, I was 14, 15 years as a really young guy. I was going to my first competition with a Vespa and a pineapple in the back, so it was really funny. And uh, there I met my mentor, Mr. Peter, We Peter Weissenegger and Mr. Alexander Radlowski as well. And uh, then I was coming to the IBA. I was doing at that time the Bacardi Martini Grand Prix. Uh, at that time, Finlandia was with Bacardi Martini. Now it's with Brown Foreman. And um, yeah, of course, uh, you always have to push your limit. And in my opinion, for sure, uh, we are the third generations of bartenders because the first generation of bartenders were before the prohibition, the second was after the prohibition, and in my opinion, definitely, we are the internet bartenders. I call them so. Because trends and news and recipes and decorations, garnishes are swapping within seconds around the world. Like uh, on that way, hello to Austria and the live stream, hello to my friends, to my family, to my company. Um, so. We got, a, we got a big community around the world, and this is really important for us and for me, um, the modern style of bartending. So in my opinion, we are the third generations of bartending. And of course, um, the IBA is, going, uh, is getting much more modern now. We got a speech in the final, we got new rules, etc., etc. So I think it's quite good to push as well a bit the beverage industry because uh, we are a really old association and this is really important for our job. Next question, please. <laughs> Otherwise, I can speak a bit uh, about my beautiful products here. Schlumberger is made from uh, Chardonnay grapes. Uh, they also got Merlot grapes. And uh, yeah, it's produced by the Methode Champenois. I was using, to get the bittersweet balance, uh, I was using the Sangria syrup from Gifa, my drone product as well. By the way, I love Monet as well, Mr. Eric Bouton, but uh, this is my drone product. And um, the Sangria syrup is really nice because I only get one centiliter of, uh, I only can pour one centiliter of sweetener. And I want to get a lot of flavors in my cocktail. So the Sangria got also, Cinnamon, orange, lemon, etc., etc. So that means I got lots of different flavors within one centiliter, and this was really important for me. To give the sweet, the sweetener a bit of balance, I catch the orange bitter from uh, Angostura, coming from Trinidad. It's a really nice one. Not too much because I like it when the pre-dinner cocktails are a bit more medium. For you guys, it's really hard to judge the uh, pre-dinner cocktail against the long drink, against the after-dinner cocktail, of course. But in my opinion, I want to get um, a better balance with my cocktail, with the pre-dinner cocktail. So I, I prefer the pre-dinner cocktails more medium than dry. Because at least um, we have to sell those cocktails in the bar. And how many martini cocktails are you, are you selling at the moment in the bar? So this is for me very important to produce a cocktail, to create a cocktail which you can produce around the world, which is very easy to reproduce as an IBA cocktail. And the glamorous factor. Some of you guys know my, my mixology style or style of mixology. I got at home a, a mixology lab, so we are distilling all our ingredients. We shock freeze them, etc., etc. Some of you guys were already in Klagenfurt in Austria in my lab. And I always need this um, glamorous factor in my cocktail. So I got eatable gold in the cocktail, and this is very healthy as well. The eatable gold is good for your blood circulation and good for your heart. So at least when you're drinking, you give your body something nice as well.
Ja, bravo, hey, Mario. Five minutes. Oof, we can speak so much uh, about so much things in five minutes. Margit, let's come to you. Are there any questions from your side? Um, is it working? Yeah. So, you're preparing before dinner cocktail right now. Isn't like in your everyday work, if you welcome some guests and this using uh, those ingredients, uh, I, I, especially... Pardon, I, I cannot get a point. I'm not yeah. Gonna, huh? Especially this um, sparkling. Is yeah. a sparkling wine the using in before dinner cocktails? Is it Thank you for nowadays? this question. Thank you for this question. Nowadays or is it? Um, we are really limited at the moment with uh, products for spark, uh, for pre-dinner cocktails for our sponsors. I was searching an um, I was searching an uh, vermouth, for example, but we don't got a vermouth at the moment at the IBA board. So I was trying to produce my own vermouth. That means I'm stirring out uh, uh, the bubbles of the sparkling wine, spread it up with a vodka, and give it a beautiful flavor uh, with extracts from the bitter, from the aromatic bitters from Trinidad. So this was the, the idea behind this drink, to reproduce a little bit, kind of a vermouth. At least for this drink, normally, as you know, you're all professional bartenders around here. Um, you need a beautiful aroma for your cocktail. Um, and you're using I don't know, um, clementines, oranges, lemons, limes, grapefruits, etc., etc., etc. I was thinking a, a lot about all those um, flavors for the cocktail, and I was coming to one point. I need the orange as an ingredient, so that means the essential oils of the orange here um, is not only for the parfum, for the aroma, it is as well for the, um, for the taste of the cocktail. So, then I was trying a lot of different uh, oranges and I'm living half of the year in Spain, in Marbella, in the beautiful country of Spain, Mr. Pepe Dioni. <laughs> and uh, I was coming to one point that the Spanish oranges at the moment, because uh, we don't got the, the time for the perfect oranges at the moment. Um, the, perfect, the perfect flavor of the oranges are coming from Spain. So, at least the aroma was not really good from the Spanish oranges. I was searching uh, more different kind of types of oranges and then I was coming to the oranges of Italy from Sicil. So I'm pairing two oranges, one for the um, uh, taste of the cocktail and one for the aroma for the cocktail. Mario, have you learned about uh, sangria in Malaga or in, uh, in Austria? Uh, the sangria stuff is definitely coming from Spain and uh, before I was not drinking uh, that much sangria but then I was trying one time in the beautiful beach club in Marbella and with a Spanish sun um, a real Spanish uh, sangria and it's completely different yeah and they're putting lots of more ingredients as well Coranta y tre, Amaretto etc etc many different styles of uh, one minute and from that time on I loved I love the I love to drink um, sangria as well and yeah. Forty seconds. You cannot give me any minus points when I'm going over the time, or am I right? <laughs> You're good. I will disturb you once again, Maria. If yeah. I as a client, and I changed my, my mind right now, and I ordered after Pardon, dinner. I don't get you. I cannot understand. Me. What you will base my after dinner cocktail? Just one ingredient. Uh, f uh, favorite ingredient for after dinner cocktail. Ten. I have to look for uh, on our sponsors at the moment on IVA, but um, Five. I like to go with Gromagne, and I like to go with Mozart because it's from Austria as well. Time. Thank you very much. For Perfect. listening to me and enjoy my drink, the Rosé Sissi. Thank you very much. Mario Hofer, judges, you're happy about the performance? Thank you, Mario. And thank you, Austria, for this first super final in the row of six we'll have in total. And a really nice ending. He just answered the question in time. Yes.
Uh, he brought up time uh, there at the end uh, of his show and he said, well, I cannot be penalized if I go above time, I can, with a little smile. Um, <laughs> and yes, he can. Um, the judges are looking at his overall presentation and yeah, there are no strict uh, technical scoring here in the, t in the Super Final, but they are looking at his overall performance. And if they can see, well, okay, yeah, you did a good job, but you went 30 seconds over time, that will be a deduction in their mind still. But Mario Hoffer here, uh, it's not the first time he's been in the Super Final. This is a really, really uh, great bartender and a really known name within the IBA scene. Um, and we can see why here. He is. He is uh, standing tall, answering the questions, well, calling lots the of self -control lots of self-control, and self -control. still making the drink in a perfect, yes, perfect smooth way while he answers his questions. Yes, and he shows a, a good knowledge uh, of the uh, IBEA structure. He's calling out the new president, uh, Pepe Dione. He's mentioning one of the judges, Margaret, by name, asking if she has any questions for him about his drink, about his performance. And he's still got the knowledge of his product and can defend why he's using what he is using and why he's not substitute anything for one another. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it was a great presentation. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the replays we'll get of him here in uh, just a short while. Um, there was a few, if you really want to you know, dig into it, and the judges will have to here, because this is the Super Final, and we will look at the smallest of details. When he was about to stir his second time, his first stir was beautiful. Second time, a bit of a lot of noise on the ice, and a lot of clings when you hit metal with uh, a glass with metal and it's a little thing it's a tiny thing but it is something that could easily make or break a difference because it is again his overall performance actually what do you think about the edible goal the um, gold the edible he gold in um, his drink it's and it's a great gimmick and it's a very Mar mario hoffer-esque gimmick um, as he stated himself he wants this flamboyant uh, over the top glamorous in all of his cocktail and something that shines through in his uh, own business as well and in his work. And um, you could also see that it contributes to the garnish and the overall appearance of the cocktail. Indeed, it, it looks absolutely beautiful. You have these small sparkles of gold along uh, against the rose background. It's absolutely a beautiful cocktail, beautiful garnish as well. Uh, we'll get some pictures of that in a moment. Um, so this could definitely be one of the winners. Yep. Maybe this is the first one up, so you'll never know. Now it's going to be the winner of the after dinner cocktail, and that was Tommy from Sweden. Exactly, as we see oh, here sorry. in the slow mo picture. Yes, we're seeing here his uh, his uh, preliminary round, which uh, won him the uh, the title of world champion within his category. He, so let's keep in mind all these competitors we're going to see here in the super final. They are world champions at this moment. They won, but now. Can they be the best of all the rest? Can they be the best of the best we got here? Tommy definitely got a shot. Really, really solid bartender. Young, but so experienced. A lot of competition on his belt. Beautiful. A bit shaky hands, but we just saw again in his preliminary heat. Really, really beautiful presentation. I'm really looking forward to see how he will behave on stage when these judges are beginning to try, try and know poke a little bit at him, get him to talk, because it is a lot easier making a cocktail, or making five cocktails, when you just have to focus on the cocktail and not spilling and uh, running around And everywhere. when you are performing in the, in the heats, then you have practiced your whole routine, you know what is going to happen, and you just have to execute that already trained routine. But in the semi-final, you don't know the questions, you can actually get asked about anything and you still have to keep the flow going while you're thinking and answering. Yeah, and one of the things our judges are also looking at, something Mario demonstrated really well, and something also looking for Tommy here to do, is that product knowledge, the history of the brand he's working with. Well, Mario was really quick to just take over the reins and say, all right, I'm working with Finlandia and explain the history of the product, explain who have distributed it even. And, and that is also something they will look at. And if you are working with uh, the Kaiba and you don't know the product's history, and you get asked, oh, so, um, so the Kaiba, you know, when was it founded? Uh, I don't know. Well, it's on the label. That's a lot of deductions. Exactly. So you have really to have to combine the general product knowledge, which, of course, have to acknowledge the limitations in the IBA rules and why yes. you are using those pro products in relate to the IBA rules. 
and of course why you have put your cocktail together as you have done. Yeah, but again, we we're expecting a strong showing. Uh, Sweden got a great cocktail scene. Um, of course, well, it is a. And he was also one of the highest scores in was general. Wasn't he was he? scoring really high. He scored over 200 points, uh, which is actually a bit above Mary Hopper. He scored 196, I believe, but the highest we have yet to come. Um, but we'll get back to him. He, I can't recall if he was the third or fourth competitor. But anyway, this guy have really got a lot of points in the after dinner cocktail. If you look at the general score. Yeah, and if we see the top three in that category, it was a really, really close race. Uh, but he just made it that step above and cracked the 200 point, which is a massive amount of points it in is classic. Really, it's really, really good. Um, and especially his techniques as well was also definitely amazing. Yeah. It when he really did was. It. And he's going to be able to show it off here again. All these bartenders, they come from all over the world and they expect they got seven minutes, that's it, then they go home. But well, these see guys perform the same technical clean same performance clean, beautiful routine with people annoying him so exactly yeah. i'm certain he can do it but let's see how he does welcome to back to iba wcc 2017 final final big final here our next competitor just literally next to me right now all the way from sweden mr tommy komlianovic He's already a champion because he has won after dinner cocktail competition. He already has got a gold medal, but it is his last chance to fight for the title as the champion of the year. Tommy, jo Tommy, sorry. <laughs> Stage is yours. You have four wonderful customer here in the room, and I'll give it all to you. Ten minutes starts now. Hello and welcome. My name is Tommy and I'm competing for Sweden. And the drink I have here is called Golden Lemon Pie. And I'm going to start to spray my glasses uh, with one golden spray because it gives the drink a better look. And uh, of course uh, you can eat the spray. Tommy, what was your inspiration for this cocktail? Uh, the inspiration for my cocktail is just now because of the gold color is uh, all the designs. It's not only in drinks, in whatever you buy now, it's a lot of gold everywhere. So that's why I chose the gold one because it's, it's more than just now. So that's my choice of the golden spray. And uh, my uh, choice of the drink is uh, one, it's a sweet drink, but also a little bit sour. Uh, and the base in the drink is uh, lemon curd and uh, butterscotch. So it's a creamy, sour cocktail. I'm gonna shake the, shake it and uh, chill down the cocktail shaker. T tell us about the bar that you work at. Where, where do you work? Uh, I work in uh, in Jönköping in Sweden. Uh, it's uh, one uh, summer place. We have open like four months uh, in the year, so it's uh, it's a short season. It's not so long. And uh, I start with the lemon juice. It's a fresh lemon juice. Have you ever had the opportunity to uh, serve this drink to any of your guests or? Yeah, we actually have it on the menu. So it's a lot of guests who like the drink. And that's why I also choose to, to have the drink 
here with me because I know the people like it, so I choose that one. And now I also put lemon curd in a drink. The lemon curd is made of uh, butter, lemon, uh, and sugar. You look very comfortable on the stage. Huh? You look very Thank comfortable. <laughs> it, really. feels, it feels like, like I'm standing in the bar, actually. So, and it needs to be fun. It's a little bit hot, but it's okay. And limoncello, I also have in the drink. Tell us about your bartending career. How did you get here? Uh, I started my bartender career when I was 19 years old. Uh, it was with some friends. Uh, we went to Kos Island and uh, we was at the bartender school in, uh, Kos, in uh, five weeks. And after that, I fell in love with this work, so I'm still here. Tommy, as you are one of our students from IBA Academy in Estonia, so if you know Estonians already pretty good. Uh, yeah. 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 And as that course was next, really good. I learned yeah. a lot of that, a lot of things in the course in, uh, in Estonia. So I recommend all of you to go that one if it's possible. Yo, thank you, Tommy Slav. Thanks. And and the next year, all of part in this world will come to Tallinn, to Estonia. If you are working behind the bar, and there are Estonian lady, what you will prepare in your bar uh, for Estonian? Halfway, five minutes. Uh, what I will uh, prepare for the students to go into Tallinn? Uh, all Estonian people who are uh, in your bar. You know Estonians really well. Ask me, what you recommend to me in your bar? Ah. What do you prefer to me to drink? To drink? Uh, of course, the golden lemon pie. <laughs> I shake it. Hi, Tommy. Uh, I'm just going to say one more thing. Um, I'm not shilling the glass, because this cocktail is the best when it's not too cold. It needs to wait some minutes, and the, the taste and the flower is coming, coming uh, forwards more when the cocktail is not too chilled. Tommy, what's the most challenging obstacle you've ever had to overcome during your bartending career? Uh, excuse me? What is the most challenging obstacle you've ever had to overcome during your bartending career? Uh, oh, I told to myself that uh, before I'm going to be 27 years old, because my dream was have always been to open a restaurant and a bar. And when I was 22 years old, I told myself, uh, before I'm 27, I'm going to open uh, one bar. And yeah, this year in May, I opened my own restaurant, so... Uh, the restaurant has actually been uh, in five years, so I have worked in the restaurant, uh, but uh, I've, I get a chance to be one of the owners in the restaurant. And uh, for me also, it's very important to, the cocktails need to look good, not only taste good. Because if they, if they look good, they're going to taste better. The people eat also with the eyes, not only the mouth. So 
I always put a lot of time on the decorations in the cocktails. Two minutes. When you're not making uh, after-dinner drinks, what is uh, one of your favorite drinks to either make or to drink? I actually drink um, easy cocktails. I like it fast when I'm in the bar, but uh, I love to try new things uh, when I'm traveling and uh, when I'm outside Sweden. But whiskey drinks, is, it's popular. I like it. Is that uh, Scotch whiskey, American whiskey, Canadian whiskey? Uh, most of them is bourbon, yeah? actually. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now I put the decoration on the drink. And I have choose uh, a lot of gold in my decoration. Just because the name of the drink, Golden Lemon Pie. And uh, also because gold is very popular in these times. 50 seconds. So this is Golden Lemon Pie. All right, Sweden. thank you, Sweden, and thank you, Tommy. Congratulations um, with your new restaurant. Definitely, and that was the golden lemon pie. That we got even more gold now. <laughs> Indeed, we have so far we have two competitors in the super final, both using edible gold. Coincidence? We'll see. Well, I don't. I think they're the only ones who does it. But let's see. I I don't recall any of our other four finalists no, doing either. edible gold. But, but we'll see. anyway. Uh, Great presentation. Great I presentation. Um, maybe miss a bit product knowledge. Yeah, we didn't. And we the didn't reason why you have com combined yeah. the spirit as you have does. Yeah, we did, did. We did not see the same level of product knowledge that we saw in Mario. Uh, there was also a bit more silence during his routine. Um, he he had a he had a little bit more. Well, he had less interaction with the judges. Mario was calling him out by name, saying, "Hey, come on, interact with me. Give me something to work with." where Tommy here, he was more waiting for the judges to take his hand. Mario just grabbed him. So, the, so I, I like Mario's presentation better, but let's not forgot, uh, forget how much importance there is, how big of an importance there is on the cocktail here and the general techniques they're using. I really like the way Tommy works. It's so clean, so steady, so composed. And as he said, he just felt like, well, I'm, I'm back in my bar. And he looked comfortable, which is really, really important and really impressive. Really good, yeah. When you're on a stage, bright lights shining down on you, you have five, per, five uh, people around you you don't know who are asking you weird questions about why are you doing this. You know? And you have the whole world watching as well. You are totally right. I also think he really, really great job. He was a really charming guy, which yeah. came across and you get a lot of his background knowledge. I could miss yeah a bit about the cocktail, yeah, but on why the combination, but but he had some he had some great points still because one of the yeah, things we have been looking at throughout points. these last two days is these uh, really really basic things. Do they ice up their glasses, for example, which we've mentioned in both Flair and Classic a lot of times, where Tommy here says, well, I'm not icing up my glasses, and this is deliberate. I'm doing this because this makes my cocktail better, and normally. He might, have, he might actually have been deducted in technical scores for not icing up his glasses. But here in the super final, when you're a winner, you're allowed to do everything you want. And he said, well, there's a reason. And that's because my cocktail is better this way. Yeah, and that is really great. When you go to the super final, you have the time to explain why you have yeah. done what you did, what have separated from the other guys. And this is definitely one of the points. Indeed it is. And, and again, good, great great presentation from Sweden still think Mario did a more rock steady job but then again Tommy is here first time in the IBA final Mario he's a you know a repeat a repeat offender in this uh, discipline he's, he knows what he's supposed to do and uh, yeah the next ones up we still got some to go 
Uh, we, still, we got uh, Jan Tesco here, which is the uh, guy in the preliminary heats who uh, who scored the maximum amount of points, the highest score we've seen uh, today throughout the classic heats. And he was representing Czech Republic. Indeed, he was. And this is a uh, oh, this is uh, again just a great, great show that he scored that high. He scored 232 points. That is a lot. That is 30 points higher. Mm -hmm. Than it than the closest than the competitor. It it is crazy. Yeah. And again, you know, we we really thought that uh, that it it would have been a lot closer running in his category actually, but he just smashed everybody. And exactly. So this guy I is really yeah. surprised, and he's actually the best on points so far. But can he make it in the super final? The yeah. Now, thing? now he showed us that he can he can deliver when it's just the cocktails. When he's not when he don't have to talk. He says, "All right, I can show what I got. I can make a killer cocktail. Cool. But can you do it?" when we turn up the heat a little bit? Can you do it when you're under more pressure than you were in the first round? And can you do it when you're not ready for it? And you have to think when you're doing the same thing over again. Yeah, and well, there's only one guy who can answer this, and that's Jan himself, and he will get the chance to do just that in a second. We see the Czech flag behind us. There's great support in the crowd for this man. And of course there's, you know, he is a, he's a world champion. Of course there's support from there's support for all the finalists. But again, one of these countries that just have this great uh, bartending team, this great association that really helps each other out. It's good to see so many of these great organizations come here to Copenhagen to challenge each other for the right to call themselves the IBA World Champion Super Final Winner Best Overall Cocktail 2010. And that will be the most... The most highest title you can get in this competition because then you'll beat every other of the winners in all the other categories uh, yeah, that's of course is a great honor it's a, it's a huge honor and we've seen some of the previous winners uh, of this, it's not only just the categories but of course the super final move on to become brand ambassadors and and really just start working uh, working with spirits and with the bartending scene on a whole nother level and this is the attention you will get when you win of course but yeah. let's see if a Czech Republic is the guy that we got for winning this competition yeah he is uh, setting up the station now yeah let's see if he got the right mindset back in 2013 one of the winners of her category Deidre Byrne from Ireland was asked all right so are you sure you you're gonna do well tomorrow she said fuck that I don't want to do well I want to win that's what this guy got to get into. He got to get that mindset in that, yeah, you don't have to just make it work. You have to want to win. You have to want to be the best. Exactly. So we'll find the winner and the lots of losers. Only one will stay on top. <laughs> yeah. Off the top, of course. And we got a lots of great candidates for that title. title. And right yeah. now, maybe check up Republic. But... As well, I think for for the moment did really good. For the moment, just look at the, the points for the preliminary heats. Yeah, Jan here, Jan, Jan will take it, no doubt about that. He scored so much higher than anyone else that if you just look at those, you know, Factors. first rounds we went through, he would just you know take everything. So I'm really really hoping that he can keep that level. <laughs> On the same point, I want to bring him down a little bit because. You know, it's a competition, and we want a you know a tight, mm -hmm. tight finish. But again, you will never know because it is seven minutes. They ha already have practice. This is longer time. You got ten minutes now, and the second, you don't know what's coming. You know, you have to prepare the ten cocktails, uh, the uh, five cocktails in the time limits. But you still don't know what's coming for you, and yeah. you still have to show the product knowledge and why you have chosen. The products and especially why you have just chosen it in the IBA limits and of course be entertaining and to show why you have mixed everything together. Yeah, our super finalists here is their judge on efficiency, time they stay on, product knowledge, product history, brand history, uh, IBA history, uh, everything that these judges can think of that has any reference at all to cocktail making. And that is a huge subject and something where a lot of people, they will fall through the floor. 
So yeah, we are really, really, <laughs> really counting on this guy to keep up his work and keep keep the bar as high as he put it in the preliminary heat. Exactly. And as we yeah. see in the side, we're just waiting for the guy. And he's coming on stage right now. So let's just send it straight on to Ansys. Welcome back here on stage in lovely city of Copenhagen for IBA 2017 WCC Cocktail Championship Final. The next category here that we have is the winner from Sparkling Cocktail. Dressed up in a pretty much vintage bartender style here in front of you, all the way from Czech Republic, Mr. Johnny Teska. Oh, what a great support. I like it. I like it. So, Johnny, you have 10 minutes. You have four yes. beautiful customers here, a crowd in front of you, and the whole world is watching you right now. Is there, Thank you. Is there anyone watching you at home? Definitely. 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 No girlfriend or right? Oh, he's free. <laughs> okay, you'll share your number at the end then, yeah? Okay, 10 minutes. Make it bubbles. Let's go? Let's go. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Johnny. Hello, miss. Nice to meet you. Hello, David. I'm working in Baxi's Bar in Prague, obviously representing the Czech Republic. Miss. <laughs> Ciao, Pepe. And I'm going to make uh, my... Copenhagen beauty cocktail for you. It's a drink that's inspired by the beauty of Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen, her innocence and the smoothness. So I'll start with the drink. My drinks, uh, my glasses are chilled. I don't want to waste my time with it. The main spirit is geranium gin. It's from my friend over there. Thank you for it. It's a unique gin. It's first time in history they use geranium in it. It's a Great idea from United Kingdom. So I'm use two centiliters in a boat. So as a next, the ingredient will be elderflower. It's the liqueur by the company who is making the liqueurs more than 100 years. So they are pretty skills. They are using lots of natural ingredients. It's very good product. Elderflower flavor because I think this is the flavor that all ladies love, especially the mermaids. Maybe they like my flesh more. Who knows? Am I going to like it as well, or do I have to be a lady to like this drink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the syrup. Thank you, Mr. Monan. I'm sure there will be some party after. Yeah, is it right? So I'm going to use it because I still believe. Monan, from by. It goes very nice with the gin and the other flower. So give us a little balance with the uh, fresh lime. I already use uh, lime instead of lemon in this drink because it's uh, very more smooth. It's not that acidy and it's let more flavors go after the freshness. How long have you been tending bar for? Excuse me, how long? How long have you been tending bar? Uh, five years, definitely, in Baxi's bar and then some about half a year more by myself. So this is a fresh egg white from Danish chickens. Thank you, ladies. So 100% fine, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and uh, when I will start uh, filling my glasses, I will use uh, a different, little different method for it. It will be something like you pour the sec first, the sparkling wine, and then you shake the drink and put it inside. Then you ha don't have to stir it because uh, the drink by itself is heavy, so it goes down. But the bubbles release it back. So it's a very nice technique. Very useful for IBA. So the sec by itself, Schlamberg Brut. It's made in Austria. It contains Riesling variety, vintage 2013. It's a product that is uh, growing in the same latitude as the champagne. But it's got more like more raw Austria flavor in it. So around seven centiliter in each. Mm, this needs to be precise. Yeah. 
Jan, I like that. Jan, I'm yes. a customer in your bar and you're making me such a great cocktail and you put this gin into your cocktail and yes. I, I ask why especially this gin? Why because, especially this gin? Yeah. Uh, because of the idea of geranium was a favorite flower of my mother. She was like always putting the flowers somewhere. It was too much, but it's okay. Like a roller coaster. Yeah, my friend. So now you can see, even on the screen, how the ingredients blend together without, without any spoon or something. And it's uh, still sparkling. It's a very nice effect, but uh, the wine is made with traditional methods, so it's keep the bubbles inside. It's not like some cheap Prosecco or whatever. Five minutes, halfway. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Hi, Jan. What do you like to do besides bartending? Besides bartending? Yes. I would like to work with wood. Like, uh, you know, the art with the wood. Nice tables and those things. It's been in my family for many years. I still have the tools and the place where to do it, but you know, this makes more money now. Jan, when you were creating this cocktail, did it happen all quickly or did you have to go through several renditions of, of experimentation to come up with the final? Yeah, mix? yeah, yeah. It was maybe too acidity and I was tasting the Schlumberger just here. So I didn't know exactly how it's going to work. So yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't easy. It took lots of experimentation to take uh, the good balance for it. Good. It's not just like you, you do it on a uh, first time. So now the cocktail is done. Now the garnishes. It's like little fairy tale, fairy, the fairy little mermaid tail on it. So this, this garnish is actually specially developed for this glass. It uh, wouldn't fit on any other. Because I'm using the, the shape of the glass, which is, I think, quite nice. <laughs> Jan, why egg white in why a sparkling white? cocktail? Sparkling because is sparkling enough? Why, why egg white? Sparkling? Sparkling cocktail is yeah. for me. Yeah, uh, there, why, there is why two egg reasons, white? definitely two reasons. The one is uh, you want smooth drink. It's for the ladies. It's for the ladies. And the uh, second one, when you have a nice foam on it, same like on the beer, it's keep the bottles inside, so it stays longer. Mm. Thank you. So the neutralized aroma from the egg white, if it will take longer to serve it to you, and it also gives a nice aroma. The egg white will hide a little bit the aroma of the drink. So there is some extra aroma that you can judge. <laughs> and also last touch, it's a dried raspberry, same as you can see on the garnish. It's a dried in you know, a like pepper mill, so it's just nice, nice red touch on the top. It's sexy. Two minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just finishing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm done. So this is my yeah, cocktail. Can you, I serve it to you? Please. Sure. Enjoy, miss. Thanks. That was definitely a charming performance. And ladies, he's single. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's a moaning after party. 
go catch this guy in Copenhagen if you if he spiked your interest. Yes, catch the next flight. And in the background, we can see a lots of applause to this guy. Yeah. A lots of confident, really pulling it off. But will it be too much, though? Well, we all we complimented so many flair bartenders for the way they work the crowd. And if there's one thing Jan here definitely does, it is work the crowd. Yeah. He has so much personality and such a great charm. And he just, you know, hurls it out over the scene. It's absolutely great to see. And I would really love to visit his bar. Exactly. And that may be also a really great point because as a bartender, you have to get this personality to yes. make your com customers comfortable. Yeah. And this guy, I think, really think he can deliver. Seeing him work in this setting uh, with this attitude and this, these great vibes, it makes me just go to his bar, sit down in front of him and go like, hey, what am I having? I just keep him coming because this guy he was just hilarious he was fun he wasn't over the top he had great charm and good technique technique was on point and you he was throwing some serious curveballs there from the judges market hassling about all right so sparkling cocktail egg whites it's a great point from her point of view well a great point in general why would you add more foam or more bubbles to an already bubbly cocktail wouldn't it be too much man? yeah but I want to keep it carbonated. So I put a lid on it with the egg white, and that is a great point. He wasn't face going like, uh, uh, I just thought it would look cool. He had a reason to do it. I think actually in general, we saw this product knowledge and especially why he have chosen to the exact ingredients in his cocktail. And that is really great to look at yes. when you can really hear that this is a guy who got the knowledge and know what he's doing. There was just one thing. I. To be honest, I hated about his routine. All right, yes. come on he with it. I balled seven centiliters of sparkling wine in the glasses. That is serious. If you can, from not a pour spot, but just straight out of the bottle, eyeball straight on seven centiliters. That's pretty damn good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare try it. And uh, I don't know if the judges believe it was straight on seven. Uh, they were completely even his glasses. So There's the correct amount of wine in each compared to the others no question about that maybe but that was, was it six bit? centimeters was it eight we don't know was it seven hopefully it was but of course you have practices you have been practicing this a lot yes. also for the last round yeah. or the earlier round so yeah maybe and got uh, this straight really hope so yeah. because it was a great performance anyway the next competitors for us is slovak republic yeah and we also saw here Absolutely a fantastic competitor. He used his uh, black tie. It was a black tie cocktail with these uh, cufflings on the side of the glasses. Really, really nice uh, presentation. Absolutely fantastic, actually. He was just using whatever he could. And you're allowed to put things on the glasses. That is just garnish you put there with the cufflings. I loved it. It's great. I'm really looking forward to see what this guy can pull off. It was a, uh, a really, really heavy cocktail. Um, it is the uh, bartender's choice, mm. um, and he chose to win, you know, to go all in for just heavy booze, heavy flavors, um, and coffee. So, you know, it's a really distinct cocktail, which can help you in a setting like this. Because we got our judges back there for the preliminary heats. They are tasting 40 different flair cocktails, and they're tasting 40 different classic cocktails. So you got to make sure that your cocktail stands out from the crowd. So it's really going to be great to hear why he have chosen all these heavy yes. ingredients and why he have combined it as he has done because it's definitely a really interesting cocktail, yeah. an interesting choice, and especially in this bartender's choice where you can Indeed it is. get and this I'm homemade product. I'm really looking forward to seeing this guy on stage yet again because he is a great performer. He had such a nice, simple, clean routine that just, again, makes you want to watch him work. And I'm really looking forward to hearing him, how, how can he handle the judges? How will he handle this pressure that, that, that uh, Pepe and Margaret and these others will put on him? Exactly. So, without guess. further ado, Slovak Republic on stage right here. So we're back on stage here. Welcome back to Copenhagen. Next category winner all the way from Slovakia here. He has won Bartender's Choice 
competition. This is the category where actually you are allowed to use one homemade ingredient, which Rasto is not using, but it's allowed also. So, and everything you need to know about the cocktail and about his creation and about himself, he will tell it to you within the next 10 minutes to you and to our judges. So, Rasto, the floor is yours yeah. for 10 minutes and it starts in three, two, one. Let's go. Rád by som vás všetkých pozdravil. Uh, veľmi vám ďakujem, že som sa dostal do super finále a ďakujem aj Mirovi, ktorý mi príde tu na pomoc a trošku vám to v tej angličtine porozpráva tú moju myšlienku, ktorá ma dostala až sem na toto pódium. Ďakujem, Miro. I would like to thank you all of you that I get the chance to get in the final and uh, also he thanks to me that I'm here to translate for this gentleman. I'm so proud of him. So please clap one more time for this guy. Ako prvé infuzujem whisky kávovými zrnami. Sú to kávové zrná od nás z Liptovského Mikuláša. Ja som zo Slovenska, mám tam kamarátov, ktorí vlastnia vlastnú uh, kaviareň, kde si pražia kvá- kávu. A toto je ich 100% uh, arabika z Brazílie. So, uh, as a first, he used the Canadian club whisky. For the coffee, he's infusing by coffee the whiskey. Uh, this coffee is coming from his hometown, where his good friends are producing the coffee. It's a 100% Arabica. Mojo hlavnou ingredienciou tohto drinku je Liga Black Balsam Liquor. Je to likér, ktorý uh, mám veľmi rád, pretože je veľmi silný a mám rád uh, bylinné silné likéry. One of the main ingredients is balsamic liquor right there. Uh, he love it because he love strong liquors, you know, and a strong spirit. So that's why he using it in his cocktail. He thought that it's a right choice for his drink. Mám rád aj kávu, tak ako väčšina z vás, a preto som sa práve rozhodol pre kombináciu Black balsam a uh, black coffee. He loves so much coffee. You can imagine how many espresso he did in his life. Uh, I can count it. So that's why he chose the uh, coffee, coffee uh, thing in his drink. And uh, that's why he tried to combine it, you know, the strong, strong uh, taste of the spirit and coffee. And that's why he tried to combine that to his drink. Okay. Okay. <laughs> for, for those of the people who have not... Let's go, let's go. For those people who have not had a chance to try the black balsam current, can you describe the flavor profile? Flavor profile, what do you mean? The, uh, what does what the black balsam taste like? Ako chutí čierny balsamic liquor, ak to môžu opísať. Čierny balsam liquor mi chutí veľmi silno, má 45% alkoholu mm-hmm. a je typický po tých použitých ingredienciách, ktoré sú samozrejme tajné ale veľmi silný a veľmi horký. So uh, this liquor is very strong to him. But in the case it's a very artificial liquor with a lot of flavors. It's it's very secret, you know. So we can't describe the taste exactly. So he he think he did a good one that he chose this liquor because in the same time when he's using coffee, it's a really sweet table. With this okay. uh, ja používam uh, black currant verziu, ktorá je ovocnejšia. He is using the black currant version, which is uh, which flavor is more fruity. Any questions, ladies, gentlemen? What's the inspiration behind the drink? What's the? Aká inspirácia za drinkom? Aká inspirácia? Inšpirácia je, že mám rád horké bylinné likéry a mám rád kávu. Takže kombinácia týchto dvoch vecí je pre mňa smerodatná. So, the inspiration is like uh, coffee. He loves coffee, as I said. He loves uh, herbs. So, this nice combination, it's with him. So, that's why he tried to figure it out some, some new cocktail, you know, which is good for you and for, yourself, for other people. And but basically, the cocktail is uh, much good for, as you can see on the title, or, or the name of the cocktail, black tie. 
it's very suitable for the gentlemen, you know, as you can see on the decoration of the coughling. And what about the women? <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for this question, actually. Ja si myslím, že to môže byť pre ženy, ale prvotná fáza bola o tom, že by som, keďže tam je whisky, že je to určené pre pánov, ale keďže je tam uh, kurant verzia Black Balsamu, tak verím tomu, že to bude chuť aj dievčatám. So, in the first time he thought that uh, the main ingredient is whisky, that's why it's for gentlemen. But, in the same time, there is a balsamic kurant liquor, That means like it could be sweet table also for the women. Halfway, 4.45 on o'clock. Whiskey is sure, uh, for I mean, gentlemen. I mean, I like whiskey and I'm not a gentleman. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I, mean, I think I'm sure, this is a one big club. I'm sure there are a lot of women in this room who like whiskey. Could be, could be, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. you know. Maybe he's a little bit more minded than, you know. <laughs> Sorry for that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Na Slovensku máme veľa dievčat, ktorým chutí whisky. We have a, he said just, we had a lot of women, they prefer whisky as well in Slovakia. You, Pratislav, you used the infusion of coffee with a whisky in coffee your cocktail. Beans. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it just takes couple of minutes to, for this infusion but if you like and make this cocktail every day in your bar how you how you make this infusion in your bar actually how long it need to take to to make the perfect infusion it just takes a couple of minutes or is it okay if you stand there a couple of days or I got you. how it changes yeah i got you ako dlho to trvá ta macerácia Uh, oh. veľmi krátko, pretože káva je čerstvo, čerstvo pražená a tým pádom jej stačí minúta, max dve. Ok, so the coffee is very fresh. It's like uh, really baked uh, coffee. So it's enough if you, will, if you will infuse it just for one to two minutes. And it, it will take what it needs. And how long will it last? Sorry? How long will the, the, the homemade ingredient last in the refrigerator or uh, ako dlho bola táto káva akože dlho stála? Uh, free day uh, pretože uh, my sme prišli v štvrtok a dneska je súťaž tak vlastne v piatok keď sme cestovali tak nám už pri na pri So in the uh, uh, before, bef- day before we travel we just take it straight from the five place this coffee and we begin here. So bola, like three uh, days. Mirko, bola vákuovo uzavretá. So, it was a uh, vacuum uh, covered. If you were to keep this in his bar, uh, how long would a bottle of the homemade ingredient be good for? Would it last for a month, a year, a week, before it would go bad? Ako toho to vydrží v bare, keď je táto káva nejakým spôsobom uzavretá, alebo tak. Uh, Two minutes. Ja vždy doporučujem čerstvu použiť, aby ten efekt bol čo najvýraznejší. So he suggesting to use always the fresh coffee because the effect of the cocktail is uh, you know. Keď je staršia, tak tá infúzia trvá dlhšie. Yeah, if it's it's like common sense, you know, if you use uh, all the coffee, the infusion it take longer time. Okay guys, I think it's time to clap. Rasislav Kuban. Black tie. Slovakia. My, my, last, right. question, my last question is... Oh, we just uh, have one question here in the background. We have a little time left. Right. What, what, what is the bar that you work at? What is, what is it like? Uh, Where do you work? Uh, mám svoju vlastnú cateringovú agentúru v Litovskom Mikuláši, ktorá sa venuje práve vymýšľaniu nových koktejlov. So he's got his own agency, which is uh, catering All right. agency. And he, well, are... thank you to the Slovak Republic. Uh, we're missing that last question, but the judge will still get it under the score. That has nothing to do with us. Um, so what do you think, Kasper? Slovak Republic, Radislav here, doing his black tie cocktail for us. Lots of coffee. 
I think a big trouble is when you don't speak the language, of course. That can be some trouble in the right translation. I don't think he got answered the question right. No. Every time there was something, there was some miscommunication between the question and what was answered. So, yeah, um, the official language of the International Bartenders Association, the IBA, is English. This is stated within the rules and within the guidelines. It is also said in said rules if you do not speak proper English or you have trouble understanding English you have to bring your own interpreter this is something you yourself as a competitor has to make sure you got Radislav did that he had an interpreter with him but does it it holds him back you don't get to see his charm it's not really him answering the question it's not really him interacting with the judges and I think he loses a lot of his probably great bartending charm because it has to go through a medium before you can actually later, answer. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes you just get this miscommunication. Personally, I don't think every question was answered the no, right the way, you know, to the question. Yeah. There, were there were several things from a lot of the questions lost in translation. There was something yeah. that went bad on both ends. His interpreter probably didn't get enough of uh, Radislav's own words uh, translated properly into English. And there were a lot of the questions that were really hard for Radislav to answer because of this, well, not yeah. the interpreter, but anyway. he, still, he, he did a good showing. I liked, the, I liked his style. I liked that, uh, like that he could serve his cocktail without touching it. I liked the cufflinks. Exactly. But and the cocktail is, of course, a really big score in the final score. Our fifth competitor here in the Super Final, one of our really big favorites, the local boy, well, the other local boy, Damiano Pesci from Denmark, representing here in Copenhagen 2017 at the World Championships at the Super Final, not to say the least. This is crazy. One this thing is to compete on your home turf, but to compete in the Super Final on your home turf, this is nuts. Exactly, exactly. This guy has already won his category in long tricks. He is a world champion, but will he be the very best well, he, in this final? Yeah, he is the world champion. Actually, the second world champion we have in Denmark. We had 2014, Jimmy Jepsen. Uh, uh, that's right. He was, that was also after dinner. Yeah, right? he, he won in, uh, in South Africa. Great showing as well. But now we got Damiano here proving, well, trying to prove that we can take it all the way, us dear Danes, to the Super Final and win everything. He got the charm. He is absolutely fantastic. And I think he got a really great cocktail as well. In a break, we just got to hit up and try to taste it. I did at least. Yeah, and, 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 for Dami, and for Damiano, I love a competition uh, rounding up like this. We have so many competitions in Denmark where you have to talk directly to the judges, stand in front of the judges, and work with them and the crowd around you. And I think Damiano will pull this off because he has so much experience doing this exact form of final. And just look at that smile. He got the crowd with him. He will win over the judges, and his cocktail is fantastic. So let's hope he'll definitely put on his A game, and he'll put on his best show for you guys. I'm really looking forward to hear all the thoughts yeah, and about it, it, everything. And he is a really, really smart guy. Let's not forget, this is a history teacher who just decided that, you know, bottles are more <laughs> quiet and less harmful than kids, so you know, why not just bartend? It's more fun, and it's the same amount of money, more or less, anyways. So he became the best bartender we currently have in Denmark, and now he's here to show what we got. And it's definitely a lot because he then, otherwise, he won't be in the super final right now. Indeed, we are well patting our own horse. We are a pr proud country, famous for our cuisine, our gastro scene, and our cocktails. We are in Copenhagen, a top cocktail city in the world. And Damiano is currently at the top of his game, at the top of Copenhagen, and ready to prove why Copenhagen is such a landmark within the cocktail scene. And he should soon be ready to represent his cocktail, the Salty Samurai. A lot of practice have been going on with this cocktail. Now, will he get off balance or will he keep his charm while doing his cocktail the whole show? I have no doubt he will make this. He will make it work. He has so much no experience. He is confident and he is ready for this. We got your back, Damiano, and the show is yours. The show is ours indeed. 
this session most likely won't be that quiet because on stage right now we have for the long drink cocktail competition winner one of yours Denmark so put your hands together the one and only Damiano Petzi all right here in Copenhagen Thank you. okay so are you ready to uh, just uh, let's check something first can you all hear me am I all right then I think we can go what about people in Taiwan can you hear him Okay, so, Damiano, 10 minutes, starts in three, two, one, let's go. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not presenting myself again, because I guess uh, my colleagues up there at the commentary station made already a great uh, job in talking about me. Too kind, actually too kind, everyone around knows they were too kind to me this time. I don't know if you noticed, there should be going around the audience as well uh, at the moment. I just placed in front of you, dear judges, a little uh, leaf. I would like to know actually if any of you know that leaf already. Do you? Yes? I got it, yes. American guy knew it. Yes, sir. Do you know what she's so famous for? All right. Anyone knows what she's so famous for in the old tradition of Japan? Anyone in the audience, maybe? No. All right. So, Shiso, traditionally, long, long time ago, back in the samurai era, let's say, it used to be a um, symbol of uh, long life. It was considered a magic plant. Samurais were using it to give uh, uh, 10 additional uh, years of life to people. So, you know, I think it was kind of a, a nice uh, gift being the host country to give you such a present. <laughs> and this to all of you as well. I don't know how many leaves left there are in the audience. I think my colleague over there should be going around now giving it probably. But yeah. Besides the joke, let's go back to my drink, which is called, of course, Salty Samurai. Why Salty Samurai? I explained before. Long time ago, when I was in, high, in the primary school, it, was, uh, it wasn't in the 70s, but almost, uh, my teacher asked the class to do an essay writing about our favorite uh, hero. And it turned out that almost all of the kids wrote about soccer players, they wrote about superheroes, they wrote about um, singers. And it came out that was pretty weird, or at least it was for my teacher, when I wrote something about my father. The thing is, back in the days, I used to see my father working every day in order to be able to afford to pay for my studies. And um, that's actually something that stayed in my mind a long, a long, a long time, because he was working basically 12 hours a day and I was not much able to see him. And then it comes the second part of the salty samurai. Salty in my dialect, which uh, if I may, it's zgustos. Uh, it means grumpy. It means, uh, yeah, salty, grumpy. And then when I got uh, Beam Sanctuary as a sponsor, the Konesho came uh, suddenly to my mind. It was pretty, pretty obvious. To the mind, those lights are insanely hot. Have you tried? <laughs> and yeah, the ingredients I'm using is uh, Hibiki Harmony, this uh, amazing blend uh, of Japanese whiskey with uh, a sort of uh, nat natural, let's say natural, because it's actually a merit of the blenders. A very, very amazing sweetness that ties together with the bananas or bananas from Giffard and gets complemented with the saltiness of the caramel I used and enhanced by the sudachi, which is uh, a Japanese citrus. Some of us can uh, actually compare it to yuzu, which is pretty popular in Denmark. But every time I use yuzu, and it's a lot of times, I get uh, complaints by my guests and they say, oh man, this tastes of uh, soap. So sudachi is actually 
amazing citrus, or at least Pontier Sudat is an amazing citrus. It's very aromatic, it's not too acidic. Acidic? Acid. Too, too acidic. And it's a great partner with, of salty caramel, banana, and uh, Japanese whiskey. Now, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to shake a little bit. If you have any question, of course, don't hesitate to do it. I mean, I always get this complaint that I'm boring because I talk too much, so yeah, please. If I may ask my colleagues from Denmark at this uh, point to give a little, little, little applause, not too much, just a little, because I get shaky. I can't hear you. You are halfway through, five minutes. Thank you, guys. So, Damiano, uh, this drink is a long drink. Uh, yes. Is, is, does that mean it's a summer drink, or when is the right time to drink this drink? All right. I will tell you, when, it, when is the perfect time to eat, drink this drink is um, every time you feel thirsty. <laughs> and that's because I believe, I believe uh, that it's something uh, that has no season. I would not suggest you to drink it in summer, to drink it in winter. I mean... We don't go drinking only on summer, only on winter. We go drinking every season. So let's do something that works for every season. Thank you. And is there an ideal customer? What kind of a person would like to enjoy this drink? Everybody, everybody. All right. <laughs> okay, that, now it would be too easy to say everyone, everyone. Uh, Actually, I, I was a little bit selfish when I did it. I would be the perfect guest to drink this drink. Because it's uh, a little bit, not too much, on the sweet side, with this uh, final saltiness coming up. And there's something that honestly makes me very happy. So, yeah. I would not say everyone, I would say me now. I hope we share the same taste. Tell us about the bar that you work at. All right, that's a nice question. I actually don't work in a bar. Uh, I work in a restaurant. And there's, uh, I think, 95% of the staff right now sitting there. If you can clap uh, our hands for a restaurant, cool. And uh, that's actually pretty funny because when I won the Nationals, uh, they say to me, congratulations, you won a trip to, not only to Denmark, to Oxenhallen, which is this place. And uh, my restaurant is uh, 55 meters from here. So, I didn't even win a bus ticket, I, went with my, I came with my bike today. So, what's your favorite cocktail and why? What's my favorite cocktail? <laughs> I actually uh, expected this question. And um, honestly, my favorite cocktail, uh, and now please don't get offended if I call it cocktail, because for real it's my favorite, it's rum and coke. And everyone in the, or okay, let's say 90% of the Danish people uh, inside this place, they know why it's my favorite. Because uh, at the, the age of 28 is the only thing that the day after, I can still remember what I did the day before. And I still am able to go to work. So that makes it my favorite drink. Plus, I used to be kind of a pirate with long hair, and the rum and coke was a pretty pirate drink. Oh, yeah, I forgot. This is actually the final touch. Uh, in Denmark, they used to call me the foam boy. It's always funny. When I write it on the internet, there's so much laugh. People laughing, people putting likes. Uh, it's just because I like to do foams. Because working with food, the foams are like... I see 10,000 foams every night in the kitchen. One minute, 30 seconds. Thank you. Foam if I was a smoker, I would say to you, I can also have a smoke in this time, but no, I'm not a smoker. Are you good at your home? Foams. And here we are. And yeah, so foams are actually, I think, one of my characteristics that uh, make me a little bit different, let's say, than uh, other bartenders in Denmark, if we can say like this. So I'm proud of it. I'm proud of the name uh, some guys gave me, even if they were maybe minute. joking. But you know, why, why not? This is not comfortable. 
What are the ingredients of the foam? Ingredients of, of the foam are salty caramel again, a little bit, that gives a nice uh, aroma to the drink. Then uh, I have uh, Pontier coconut uh, puree and a little bit of egg white. And the reason why I put egg white 30. is just uh, to avoid uh, to coagul, to have um, coconut coagulated with um, sudachi. Because uh, honestly, just coconut and uh, salty caramel was a very, um, very nice foam. Then, uh, yeah. 15. If I have 15 seconds, I can start serving them, I would say. Thank you. In seven seconds, I can't serve you. Please, I apologize. I hope you can forgive me. Well, thank you, Damiano. Great showing from the Danish competitor. Give it up to Foam Boy. And as we can see, a lot of cheering in the background. Yeah, he was working the crowd. And as expected, it's his home scene. His, yeah. well, not hometown. He is from Italy. But he's working here just 55 meters away, as yeah, he said. There's a lot of people in here yeah. guarding his back. And of course, he delivered. Again, this really charming performance yeah. and really entertainer. Again, really great to look at. Yeah, and right off the bat, you know, he starts out. Uh, serving the judges and the crowd these uh, these uh, Japanese uh, citrus leaves mm -hmm. and just that way engages the crowd and engages the judges before almost before he even started his routine he was just on point already there drawing us into his universe it's beautiful start to his routine so this interaction in the beginning I also gave a big big plus yeah. It's really great yeah. to look at and also show this control he got this he will bring his A game and show what he's you Ind know. Indeed he did and uh, let's hope his cocktail tastes good. We actually had a taste earlier and it's yeah. pretty damn decent let's be honest about I that. I like it definitely. Um, but next up we have one of the competitors who we are really excited to see because it is Taiwan and he is a flair bartender. <laughs> when have a flair bartender ever won the super final? Actually never. Never. In this competition anyway. It in the IBA so this is if he pulls it off that is history in the Megan and if if Damiano pulls it off that's also history because then he's winning on home turf anyways let's stick to Taiwan here but uh, this is as you see is a flair bartender and in this super final he will be competing in line with everybody else and all the other classic guy this is only on his cocktail and can he defend yeah. only his cocktail and he is not allowed to do his flair show in the final he has to as all the other competitors we've seen here all the other five he has to talk about his cocktail show his product knowledge explain why he has built his cocktail like he did why this creation is as it is and that can be really really difficult if you're not prepared for it and this is not something you're used to doing in flare competitions you really aren't so it will be fun to see how much yeah. knowledge he has on it. Of course, he has been practicing the whole show and the entertainment part. So this is now only the cocktail we will refocus on. So yeah. do you think he can deliver this? I think he can. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen him out of the pirate gear and you can see that he is a serious bartender. That he, and that he, just by looking at him, you get confidence and you, he knows what he's doing. Um, I'm really certain he can pull this off. Um, however, I'm quite sure he will uh, deliver this super final in his guild outfit in a suit. But I would have loved to see him in the pirate outfit. That would have <laughs> been absolutely beautiful. But hopefully then he will deliver this same confident about his drink as we'll see in a moment yeah. on stage. So there's nothing... Yeah, there's nothing left for us to do other than say that this is the last competitor yeah. uh, in the Super Final this year, 2010 IBA World Championships, and we're crowning the overall bartender cocktail of the year. So now we are getting him on stage and looking forward to see the show, what he can do. No entertainment, only speaking and make his cocktails. And now is as well five different cocktails, not different, but the same identical cocktails. Making five cocktails, do? four for the judges and one for the photo booth. Exactly. So now he also has to make more cocktail than he did in his yeah. earlier round in the flag competition. Straight to answers on stage with our, with our competitor from Taiwan. Exactly. And here we go. Yes, indeed. That's 
100% true. With an outstanding performance, five minute routine in his flare final. This gentleman over here right next to me, all the way from Taiwan, Mr. Chun Shen Chen. <laughs> has made his way to the super final. Thanks to his routine and obviously thanks to his delicious drink. Chun, 10 minutes are yours. You've got beautiful customers here in front of you. The whole world is watching you right now. And you're online in three, two, one, let's go. He was saying good evening. I think the mic has some problem. Can we please stop the time? Hello? Hello? Reset it. Michael. Sorry. Whoever has a button. Okay, thank you. Okay. So one more time. All the way from Taiwan, please welcome. Three, two, one, let's go. Good evening, honorable judge and competitors and everybody. My name is Chun Sun Chen and I'm from Taiwan. Now I'm going to introduce my cocktail. My cocktail name is Hugh Inspiration. This cocktail is created by my coach and me. My coach is Guo Zilin and she's in there. Yes, and she is a World Cocktail Competition Classic Champion before also. So I'm very happy to show guys and now I'm gonna to introduce and I will use Jim Beam White bourbon whiskey to be a base and the Kuiper Sour Robert because this cocktail I very like it so I usually use it in our cocktail and when we mix this and we kind to try a kind of of sweets and we choose mornings cucumber syrups and pineapple syrups and we mix it like the Denmark's words cube and it means people will be happy and lucky. So thank you. You gave an, an amazing flair performance earlier today. Do you do work at a bar that does only flair or both flair and cocktails? Uh, I work in a bar, but I don't flair in my bar. Yes. I'll practice flair in my pr practice flair room, but not in the job. some of the more popular drinks that they serve at your bar? Are they classic cocktails or simple drinks? I think it's mojito because the weather in Taiwan is very hot. So mojito lets people drinks uh, very comfortable. So uh, uh, it might be mojito in my bar. Uh, what was the most uh, challenging aspects of the competition for you? Uh, because I have to work uh, when I work in school and I'm a teacher and night I'm a bartender in a bar. So I have um, 
not really much time to practice my competitions, but I have a, we have a good coach in Taiwan. They train my bartender skills and uh, my cocktail, so that's, I'm very, very happy. <laughs> Thank you. So who is your uh, drink aimed for? Who is the ideal customer for your drink? Yeah. So who would you aim your, the drink to, the cocktail to? Who is the audience? Yeah. Um, in Taiwan, uh, like families or uh, people to want to relax, they come to bars and they order my cocktails. You are halfway through, five minutes remaining. This is the first time I do classic cocktail. And it's very <laughs> afraid. Thank you. And next uh, world championship gonna be held in Estonia. And uh, you as are one of the best tenders in the world you are really welcome there actually Estonia is a really Nordic country cold one a lot of snow what what do you think what spirit will be the best for the cocktail to to produce in Estonia as a Nordic country cold one Promote Taiwan Gao Liang. It's a best spirit and it's from Taiwan. And it is a kind of spirit that alcohol is high and that people drink it will be very warm. And it's very special, so I will promote this kind of spirit for the competitions last year, uh, next year. Thank you. Thank you. Bring it to Estonia, please, next year. I know you are a very, very good uh, flavor bartender, but what kind of cocktail do you like more? I like uh, frozen kind of cocktails because it's very hot in Taiwan, so I like to drink uh, more cold cocktails. You speak English very well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm practicing now because uh, uh, I, when I was a student, I don't like to study because more time every time I flare. I flare in school. So when I was a student, my baggage, inside, no books. All is butter. So I practice all day. And when, and when I come to go to other countries, everyone speak English. So my coach asked me and teach me how to speak in English. So maybe it's not very well now, but I will learn and practice more. Thank you. Two minutes. Thank you, Taiwan. That was beautiful. Great presentation.
uh, despite of uh, some... Uh, Again, uh, this miscommunication, okay. that could be yeah. with a translator. There's a few uh, miscommunications when English is not your uh, Primary first language. or second language. Yeah. Um, exactly. and, and we have these, uh, this issue with it is still a flare bartender. As he said on stage during the super final of the World Championships, this was the first time he competed in a classic format. That's crazy. Um, and a lot of the flare bartenders who make it to the super final have the same experience. Um, and there's a valid argument, I'll say, to say that it is not necessarily a fair judgment of the flare bartenders in this format because this is not what they are practiced to do. Exactly. You they got a lot more to focus on when they're doing the show. Yeah. Exactly. But of course, um, all in all, uh, oh, and, and his nerves, got to give him that. As, yeah, he as, really kept his cool. As we saw both now, Pirates really and good. Batman, they get resets on time. Um, his microphone did not work. And something as small as that, yeah, okay, yeah. we just reset the time. But for him, it's like, that's nerves, you know. It was really he, good. That throws him off his game. But, but this, anyway, yeah, this, this was it for us from the uh, World Championships 2017 in Copenhagen, the IBA Championships. And it's uh, been a very pleasure for all of you that have used this live stream. And of course, to all the competitors who yes. have practiced a lot to perform for you guys. Yeah. All the competitors now deserve what they will get, which is the gala dinner. And during the gala dinner, the winner of the overall cocktail will be announced. So we will get that to you later on. And but you can find it on the EBA. Yes. So thanks to our sponsors. Really thank to you out there. Next year, we'll be in Estonia in Tallinn. Tallinn. So Let's hopefully see what this we're going to see you there. And see you in Estonia. Cheers. <laughs>